Alright guys, Touchcraft back again today. I hope you're all doing well and enjoying your day so far. And with Optic the new team to beat here in the CDL, some are suggesting that FaZe, by leaning into this villain role, have put too much pressure on themselves in the critical matches. Pressure under which they cracked in the two series against Optic Texas. Very much intrigued to your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoy the video. Subscribe if you're new as always. I'd greatly appreciate it. As with the YouTube algorithm, thank you very much indeed for doing that. First of all, lots to dive into because the matches begin for the Stage 2 qualifiers in just a few days' time here. One of the teams that's going to be involved in that, of course, is none other than the Paris Legion. They had a pretty good past weekend, honestly, by going top eight. They won a match, right? Finally, right? They lost all their games so far in stage one, at least in terms of the qualifiers. They win their first game up against the, uh, the Seattle Surge, of course, a very surprising result. But still, there are, doesn't seem to be like a team that's going to challenge for the top six on a regular basis. Maybe they need some sort of other move to take this team potentially to the next level. Because last year, it was very frustrating as a fan that, like, pretty much every single game that Paris and Los Angeles Grillers played towards the end of last season, you just knew the result before it had even begun. This year, hopefully, will be a different story. They might be bringing in Jimbo, as was spotted right here in Zero's lobby, I believe. I mean, John at Gravity Apox, that being one of their assistant coaches, and then a Jimbo La also spotted in the same lobby. So maybe that's going to be the addition to Temp on the roster instead of Felony. Quite interesting stats from last weekend, really, from Paris, because pretty sure when they're Search and Destroy, the entire team of Temp, Gravity, and John had like a 1.3 in Search, and Fella had like a 0.7. I guess he was the bomb carrier, right, and put in difficult spots. Maybe he doesn't mean all that much, but just goes to show maybe that if there was somewhere an upgrade might be made, John, I thought, had his moments this weekend more than Fellow did. Maybe it's time to bring in another move, right? It's pretty cool to see Paris actually making an attempt here because, in fairness, they did win a match last weekend. They didn't look terrible, right? They played Boston and played them pretty close at times as well. If they didn't throw that Surge and Destroy, they could have won that series as well. So cool to see these teams looking to make further moves. This seems to be what Paris are up to right now. And Zero even quotes Street says, as I would just like to announce that this team did quit against me. It was the Gavutu control. They were scared of my B strats. So, yeah, well, thanks, Zero for his service, getting all this information out there to the public. But of course, I'm um, look, other teams that may also be looking to make moves. I believe New York played the first game of this weekend up against London on the Friday. And um, still, we, we think New York are going to do something. Maybe something will happen today or tomorrow that fronts. But at also Paris Legion, sometimes it's going to be last minute because there's barely any turnaround time at all between the end of the stage one major and the start of stage two. That's why I'm kind of tempted to believe that if things do happen here, it's more going to be like substitute switch outs and stuff like this. Also talking on the challenger side, this from Texas Nation, they've created a Twitter account. This is kind of strange to me because I don't think these are like signed or whatever to the Opti Academy. They're obviously not. But um, at the same time, the Texas Nation is kind of the team name. Like they've got a similar logo right to what Optic Texas have got going on over there. Of course, this is the team with General as the substitute. So kind of an interesting one. Like that they've got their own Twitter account now. I believe they're looking for some sort of organization, some sort of funding. But it doesn't seem like Optic want to commit to that yet. Maybe they don't just see the return. And I don't blame them for doing so. But in fairness, there's other organizations that I've done so lately, right, and brought on Chandra squads to seemingly relatively decent effect. This also just to mention real quick, because the Stallions, new, um, well, not really an organization as of yet, technically, just the name of the team that Zuma's kind of brought on as his challenger squad. Pretty cool to see these guys in action over the last couple of days. So good to see how the progress is going to be for these boys. The challenger stuff is going on right now, right, trying to qualify him for the next stage of the elites. And of course, it's players like this that in general are much easier to sign than some of the other ones, because the fact of the matter is, a lot of these teams have been really confident, of course, in their starting rosters are going to succeed for this season. And when they don't succeed, then what exactly do you do with the roster, right? Because, okay, if you're a Los Angeles good as if you're a subliners, these guys are signed to massive contracts. You can't just get rid of them necessarily, right? And the trading situation is very much up in the air. The way that it really works most easily, right, is either you bring in a player from your sub bench or you do what Minnesota Rocker did last year and bring in a guy like Standy, who, of course, is a bit of a revelation for them. It wasn't even on the sub bench or wasn't signed elsewhere. So I guess other teams will consider that route. Cool to see Zuma getting involved in this side of things. And this also from the Tacrum Academy speaking on the Optic side. So, of course, Optic dominated this major pretty much. They've now won seven series in a row, which is very impressive. Two of which, of course, against FaZe. And look, there hasn't been the competition from Krim and the other guys, but FaZe have been the number one team for so long, and I guess now, like Optic having beaten them twice, they have to be the number one team in the game, certainly the team to beat. And the way they lost these two series was very interesting, because I'm certainly outplayed in the grand finals, no doubt, especially in the respawns, but just the way that FaZe pretty much manhandled everyone else they played, other than Optic, was quite interesting, right? Because they didn't seem to quite play their game against Optic, especially in the final three maps of the first series in winners round two, and in the grand finals in the respawns, as they were against their other teams. No doubt, 
Club. They played a fantastic series, but it feels like the kind of the crowd energy and just the kind of pressure that was on them, the phase guys, during a series like that against Optic, seemed to have some sort of impact on how well they played. Now, there's been a lot of talk about this, to be honest. Of course, this well, these two images are absolutely phenomenal. After the game one, Roger Abisi was, um, you know, talking about the crowd and the energy that was in the room, the confidence that they had at that time after winning that Bacar Shah point, going up 2-0 as well, to then, well, then, of course, Optic turned the series around completely, and Dashi drops this after the game five, round six, after they 6 0 them in the final game. And that was honestly um, a pretty big collapse, right? Like, of course, Optic are expected to win at least one or two maps in the series. I don't think um, FaZe, it was two in their heads that much when they lost the control, then they lost the Gavutu. But just the way they collapsed 6 0 on the Tuscan Search and Destroy was a bit of a surprise to a lot of people. And I don't really feel like if this was online, for example, I don't think that would have happened. Like, if it was online, no crowd, no pressure in the stadium, like, um, no overrated chance coming out before and during the game and all this type of stuff, I don't think Optic would have won that convincingly with the momentum that they would have had, of course, being in the stadium, but also I don't think FaZe would have collapsed in quite that way. Of course, the crowd was certainly putting the pressure on, and part of the reason why the crowd's putting the pressure on FaZe is because they've kind of leaned into this whole villain role. They've been the dominant force in the scene for quite some time, winning pretty much everything, so it makes sense that, of course, they're going to be hated by some elements of the community, and they've leaned into that most certainly, right? Simp and Abizio, or Simp especially, has leaned into this kind of taking on that role within the scene. Some people see that as inauthentic, but, you know, this even back in 2019, Simp said, I'm about to become a villain, I'm getting so tired of being nice. There's another tweet I'll show for you guys here in just a second, but I'll show what the reverse sweep guys had to say on this, right? The fact that they've leaned into this villain role and they're taking all that extra pressure, that means it's kind of come back to bite them in the big series. If anything, if anything, I'm not going to talk, I'm not going to look at a BZ. I'm going to look at, for one, Arsties, but at the end of the day, RC started to play better later in the tournament. But secondly, Simp, dude. We got like, we got to talk about Simp because Simp, like you said, he's been wildly inconsistent when this guy was regarded as like the best player in the game for the last like two years. I mean, I think it, I think it goes back to what Ian was saying. Like, I think they need to kind of, if, if they're going to have this like forced villain thing, I think they just got to drop it and just play to where they, they feel like nothing's on the line. They're just playing cards with their friends. I, like I how it was on their come up. Yeah. Where, I, no I one, right. where they didn't have all this pressure yes. to be the, the greatest. Cause bro. And this is not, I, I'm not trying to make it sound negative towards them, but once again, bro, I, I follow them both. Okay. I see the tweets. They let you like, they can say whatever they want to me. If they're like, well, I don't care about that. Bro, if you're tweeting, if you're taking time out of your day tweeting random internet trolls and, and like trying to dagger them, it, you care. You care even if it's a little bit. And I, I think that is affecting them more than they probably want to admit right now because they have all this pressure. Because they know. I mean, yeah, dude, they 100%. got moved. I, I believe so, too. They've been and the most they dominant team. Overrated, bro. bro. Overrated chant. That was which the one is, that I mean, got unbelievable. Me. Which is unbelievable. That was ridiculous. That's yeah. so yeah. ridiculous. But, but That's so disrespectful, the, honestly. They've been the best team for so long and, and amongst the top five. And they're just getting booed out of their minds. And obviously, I get it. It's Optic. It's Optic's event. Blah, blah, blah. But like, I don't know. I think they it's what you said, Pat. win. Exactly. Optic 100%. fans win. They I think Optic won. They were being disrespected. Optic Sim. one before the series even started. I'm not gonna say I'm not gonna say me and Pat are better than Sim or Beezy and them, but yo, some people are just built for it. Yeah, no, I mean, no, it, no, it no, takes you are. Some, some people, just some, people some people, some people eat it up. Some people like, eat it up. I think Sim and Beezy thought that they would like it, right? I think they thought in their head they could go into that like, oh, that'll really piss me off and get me going. Like I dare him. But then when the, when then when the Optic wins a map, you're like, like, yeah. am I really about to turn into a on. And, and then I you, really blink, you blink, you're down 3-0 game five, and you don't got to yeah. kill. You're like, yo, what in the hell just happened? Just because you're like, it's when, it, when it's working, you're like, yeah, I told him. Like, I'm up 2-0. And then you sit down, you're like, am I going to be on a, a Twitter meme after this? Uh doing this like Pat, i think it matters so that's the thing when you look at most of the kind of villains we've had in the call of duty scene the likes of parasite aches of course both on that podcast crim six as well comes to mind these are players that kind of can handle that situation if they're going to stand up and talk trash they're players that can well they can receive it they can handle the pressure they can deal with that type of stuff whereas um it seems like maybe simba piece of the suggestion is like okay they were pretty happy to lean into this role when they're winning everything but all of a sudden when the crowd starts to really be against them and the pressure's on and optic are putting the pressure on them and all this type of stuff and the community's talking trash in their replies like I'm um, to another level that they've never seen before, then it actually starts to get to them right. And I can certainly understand that. And Abel even suggested this final series was over before it had even begun, just because of the confidence that the Optic guys had from the crowd, and also the fact that the FaZe guys are basically shook by getting all of this kind of pressure lumped onto them and the overrated charts, all this type of stuff. They've got to walk out there on the main stage, deal with the Optic crowd. It's a difficult time. And they've put some of that pressure on themselves by going into straight villain mode as Simp describes it. So who knows what will happen here? Like, can they get, can they come back for this, right? I'm sure they can. FaZe shall win 
going to get at some point to another. The team is simply just too good all across the board to let this one slide. But um, I mean, still, it is an interesting discussion to be had that this event, they seem pretty dominant against everyone they played outside of when they played Optic. Not just because it seems because Optic were the better team as they were at this event, but also due to other factors that the crowd contributed to. But also, I guess, well, FaZe themselves, you could argue, contributed to in terms of the pressure that they've been forced into by taking on this villain role. The thing is, though, they're kind of in too deep at this point, right? Like, Sims kind of taking on the, this personality, like this persona, I guess you could say. Like, some people argue it's kind of, uh, you know, fabricated, right, on the timeline. But uh, because he's gone down this route, you've kind of got to stick with it at this point. That's kind of the, the mojo that they're going with, at least for this season. So you can't really step back at this point, right? Because uh, the fans have kind of got used to it. They've got used to the, the drama between the two organizations. And I do wonder how much you guys think this is a contributing factor to the way the results went to this past weekend. This also, to mention from Gigi Brankenwood, on this day, that being yesterday now, back in 2020, that was the last LAN event we had until, I guess, what, stage four last year that was back on LAN again. So pretty crazy. That's when Dallas Empire won the LA home series. Is um, I'm pretty sure, like, maybe Optic weren't here and FaZe weren't here. It was a bit of a weird one. Maybe one of those two teams was here. It was like that situation where only eight teams would attend each home series. Bit of a shambles, to be honest. Thankfully, we're past that nowadays in the event. So, well, all the teams are in attendance. So if you win, it's definitely a deserved victory. And uh, there's no caveats about the victory. I don't know, this team wasn't there. So you got a free win, all this type of stuff. Now, um, uh, after this event, that you went on to win the first online event as well. That's kind of what a lot of people seem to forget in the Modern Warfare season. The Dallas had won a LAN event at the end of this. And also, Shotzi played great, I'm pretty sure, this event as well. So everyone was calling Shotzi the onliner. But he actually did turn around his gameplay very quick from right at the start of the year into this LA home series. But I guess this is the last LAN event that Crim6 has been able to add to his list of victories. This also, if I'm unable, just to mention real quick. So this is the power rankings that he came up with. Now, I guess he's done this deliberately just for controversy. But he's done these back to front, as in in the S tier and all the tiers, the, um, the top team is on the right hand side, which go and then goes to left, which doesn't make any sense, right? Because of course, there's different teams and different number of teams in, in the different tiers. So um, it just looks really ugly to look at. But what he's saying here is that Optic are number one, then FaZe are number two, then Ravens are third, LA Thieves are fourth, Toronto Ultra are fifth, which is an interesting take. Well, I think honestly, these top three is a no brainer. Putting Thieves above Ultra is quite interesting just because Thieves came top six, Ultra came top four, then again, and also Ultra did beat Thieves in the match that they played them. But um, I don't honestly mind this, to be honest, the way Ultra are playing right now and the kind of the trajectory that they're on, as Ben J. Nassim would say. Then Boston Breach. These five, I actually think, are significantly above the rest of the pack right now. And then you've got Boston Breach, Minnesota Rocker, Seattle Surge, still down here at eighth, which I think is probably about right, given the, how well they started, but certainly looking at where they are right now. And the bottom four is kind of a no-brainer, with New York way down here in the D tier, and actually Barris Leeds are moving above them. Pretty shambolic stuff. But very much intrigued to your thoughts on all this stuff in the comment section below. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy it, hit the like button. Tell us YouTube gods. This is a good video. I just like you should see it as well. And I've got the competitive Call of Duty community. Thank you as always. Take care. And I will see you next time.